How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to share some tips and tricks with you on how to successfully sell on Amazon Marketplace. But first, check out this BenQ Screen Bar Lite. This screen bar is just like your bigger desktop version, except you can carry it around with you. It comes with a case, plugs right into the USB port of your laptop, and clips right onto the screen. It has auto dimming, you can change the brightness as well as the color temperature. If you guys are interested in this product, check out the affiliate link down in the video description below. Before I jump into all of this, I want to cover this at a high level. You just think about how you should be selling stuff. Because sometimes, let's say you have this peas thing and retail price is $25 and you think you, be, you should be selling it at a certain price. Uh, maybe you think it's worth $20 because it's used. But the thing you have to realize is you shouldn't really sell things by how much you value them. You have to get engaged of how much the market values it. For a used stuffed animal, people might not value it that much. It might be worth very, very little, maybe $10 or $5 because no one really wants like something that's been touched, something that's been used. So keep this in mind when you're selling something, if you want to sell as much volume as possible, you need to lower the price until it's at the demand level, which is the price, which is basically market price really. And sometimes you might get caught up of like, being too attached to a certain item and you think, oh, um, you know, I would only let this go for a certain amount. But you have to also take a step back and think about if you didn't sell it, what's going to happen to that item? It's just going to sit there. So sometimes it's a lot more valuable to you as cash because then you can take this cash, invest it. You can do so much different things with cash, right? It's, it's universal. You can go on vacation with it. You can do so much more stuff with this cash other than this item. If, if, you know, not talking about this peas thing, because for me, it's just sitting here and it's actually decoration for this thing. Um, but if you have something that's just stored somewhere in the closet somewhere and that you're not using, then you can take this out to liquefy it in terms of you know, selling it to someone else. And then this money can then work for you. So in the, in the name of efficiency, it's kind of good to try to liquefy everything um, into cash so that you can make it do something for you. So just take a look around your place. Everything that you haven't touched for quite a while, everything that's just sitting there idle, something that is uh, you haven't used for a year or something, you might actually want to sell this, um, you know, I'm using uh, Facebook Marketplace right now and it's working very well for me. It's actually worked a lot better for me than uh, Let Go or Close 5. So I'm very glad that I uh, started uh, selling on this. Um, so let me go on to what else you should sell on there, such as heavy stuff. Um, I've been a very big eBay seller all this time. As you can see here, there's a package right here I need to deliver, I need to send out some at some point. Um, and usually when someone buys something heavy, um, you might be burdening that amount where you're shipping it out, or you might be increasing the price. So whatever market value it is that's floating around out there, um, you have to charge that amount and people generally sort of expect almost to not pay for shipping. So if let's say you're selling something for $50 and it costs $20 to ship, um, people only want to pay $50. So they want the item to be $30 and $20 shipping, or they want it to be $50 and then free shipping. Whereas if you're selling it to someone local, they might not want to take, you know, all of the credit for the shipping. So instead of you pocketing $30 minus fees and stuff, you could sell this $50 item for like $40. Okay. So you split the difference, you know, some of it gets to, the person that's buying it. So then they get a little bit better deal and then some of it comes to you so you get a little bit more profit. Or you can use this extra leeway in, in free shipping because you know, you're going somewhere um, to deliver this item or you're meeting somewhere someplace and you can lower the price of the item and then you can essentially make the item go a lot faster. What I've noticed is sometimes there are a lot of items that you cannot even sell on eBay. Um, sometimes they're too heavy. Uh, you have, you know, I have a roll of cables or something and it's like 10, 15 pounds or something. And 
if someone were to pay for that, they, they absolutely can't because shipping will cost more than the item itself. So um, this is something to be very aware of and um, you just kind of have to deal with it. And I feel like, I don't know, it's, work, it's been working a lot better um, than Craigslist. Uh, I don't know, it's because of this, this interface where you can just snap a picture and stuff. It's really, really fast on Facebook Marketplace. You just uh, snap a picture with your smartphone and then you just say what category it is, how much it is, and within like a minute, I can like list one item every single minute almost. Um, generally, I wanna list stuff for $5 or more uh, because you really don't wanna meet someone somewhere because it takes you time and effort depending on how far you want to go to the meeting place. It's gonna cost you, I don't know, 50 cents or something to, to in terms of fuel for you to get to that meeting place. So, uh, you know, they might not show up, there might be flakes and stuff. So. Um, you want to group things so that if it's less than $5, you want to, you know, make it more like if, if it's something very cheap and then, you know, maybe they would, um, someone would pay, uh, more for that amount. And then you can also group buyers. I've said it in the uh, vlog yesterday where, um, you don't want to have too many times on a day because because then you would end up going to this meeting spot multiple times. You don't want to keep on going like 10 times or something. So what I try to do is try to set a certain time of the day once or twice and then just say, okay, I'm going to be here at this time. Do you want to meet me at this time? Well, some people cannot, some people can, but then if they can, you can try to group more people together. So then um, you might have a higher chance of actually selling something versus you showing up and then they, they're not even there. That, this would be like a tragedy. You go there um, to meet just one single person and then no one shows up. Um, a thing to know about pictures over here because um, I took some professional quality pictures because I do have these studio lights and I have some like kind of paper that's really nice to make it so that there's no border uh, behind. There's no kind of like shadows and stuff. And people kind of remark, people like, thought that like, oh, this is, is this your picture? So what I would recommend is you really don't want to be too professional about it. Yes, have good lighting, but you don't need to have like a backdrop or anything with, with no creases in the background. You want to make it look like that, you know, you just, it's just something laying around the house and then you just snap a picture of it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and this helps you sell your stuff, especially all those things that's just sitting around. I know I certainly have so much of it and eventually you might see me have less and less around here as well, which is kind of freeing. Um, if you have a hard time selling things that you're too attached to, I recommend to sell the things that you're not attached to uh, first, the stuff that's least attaching. And then for me, it helped a lot because once I got to those, I kind of like, have this enthusiasm and I'm like, oh yeah, this is great. I realize how great it feels selling those things because it's no longer a burden to me. Um, I don't look at it anymore. In fact, if you try to you know, ask me to recall all that stuff I sold on eBay, sometimes I pull up the old pictures that I sold. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I had all that. It, you know, if I collected all that, it would have been a huge pile. So, <coughs> so thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to give me a like, press that subscribe button and ring that bell icon.